So do you have an Excel Infinity project? And if you don't have an Excel Infinity project, you are missing out on Excel learning, particularly if you're an Excel VBA beginner. But what's an Infinity project? Let me tell you about my Infinity project. You can go ahead, download the Excel file and investigate this with me. So I like a bit of chess and I had a crazy idea in 2018. Could I program Excel as a chess computer, could I teach Excel, program Excel to play chess? And this is just a little bit of what we got, got up to. So you might know how a knight moves in chess, N for knight in chess, not sure why, crazy. But I can show the moves. And if you know a bit about chess, you can see we've got the chess moves on here. And this is just part of it because I tried to do a whole chess computer. Now, why does all this matter? Well, I'm suggesting to you that if you want to get good at Excel VBA, you need an infinity project. It's a safe space. It's a project you can never complete. It's going to stretch you in ways that you never thought. It's going to drive forward your Excel VBA programming ability. In this video, I'm going to tell you more about my Excel VBA infinity project. I'm going to show you some cool tricks and tips I learned in VBA through this project. That's all coming later in this video. But if we're meeting for the first time, a big welcome to Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I'm Chris Mortimer. I love bringing the powerful stuff in Excel to people like you. And if you're tired of searching the internet for what you need to know in Excel, you're going to love our Excel cheat sheet mini course. It's absolutely free. You just got to put your email in and it will be emailed to you. It includes our formula trainer tool and some videos on what I think the most powerful stuff in Excel is. The link is in the video description below. So go ahead, download the Excel file and work along with me. What we're going to do in this video, we're going to look at this part of the Infinity Project. So can we program the night moves? This is what we're going to learn how to do in the next 10 or 15 minutes or so. So how would you even start with this? We want to be able to move the night to some square and then click the show moves button. And then we want the available squares to be highlighted. How would you do that? Well, now's a good time to stop the video because planning and conceptualization is so important in Excel VBA and in Infinity Projects. But I've done a little bit of preparation for us and I've been working on the concepts here. So we've got our night and we know a night move, it involves moving two squares up or down and then one square left or right or up or down. All those two squares could be left or right. You know what I mean. I've illustrated the idea here. So how could we articulate that logically? The knight travels two squares up or across and then one square up or across. Or across. So it's always two squares, then one square. Two plus one equals three. Hmm. This is our key concept for getting this piece of functionality working. If we can find the differences between the column and the row numbers of the cells, that means the cells on our board, we've got an eight by eight chessboard here just with some simple Excel formatting. Then we can find the legal moves. If we can find the difference in rows and columns between a particular cell and the cell that the knight is in. So that's our concept. So now if you are working on your Infinity project, you'd have to go into the VBA editor and then work on that planning and conceptualization. Now, I've got the actual code here. Uh, we're going to go ahead, go to this button. We're going to switch the routine over to our planning routine. That's the routine we're going to write now. Because planning is so important in Excel VBA. So I really recommend making some notes. And these are what we call annotations. And when we're articulating in English or in your own native language, what the code is going to do. People call that pseudocode, pseudocode. It's like writing out in English or your native language what the code is going to do. We need to clear the existing range on the board here. We need to get, how about this? We need to get the current cell that the knight is in. I'm going to show you some cool Excel VBA to work this out. And then we go through step by step. You can download the file and you can see, um, you can look at these instructions. So I'm just going to go through these step by step now and translate this into Excel VBA. So first, how would we clear the existing range? Well, firstly, a named range is going to help us here. I've already put a named range in. So I've got board as uh, as the named range there. So it should be as simple as this. I'm going to say range board. So making sure I've got the spelling 100% accurate here. 
range board, and then I'm going to say clear contents. Now, we do have clear available to us in Excel VBA. That's useful. That clears everything. So formats, any conditional formatting, and the value, of course, it's all going to be clear. I love clear contents because it's just going to clear the contents of the cell. So let's hit the F8 key now. Step through the code. You can also go to debug and step into. And let's start getting this code working. What are we expecting to happen? Just expecting the board to clear that. So we're warmed up, hopefully fairly straightforward for getting into this. This isn't a beginner video, but if you want a beginner video, check out our beginner videos on the channel. We've got one hour introduction to Excel VBA, 15 hour introduction to Excel VBA, 20 minute introduction. I'll put some links in the video description uh, below. So what about getting the current night cell? How would you do that? Well, this is so cool. Excel can understand the position of shapes on the screen, and in particular, the cell that they're currently in. What's the code here? Well, we've got to know the name of the shape, and the name of shape, the shape is night here. And then I'm going to use message box, and I'm going to say active sheet dot shapes, and then night, and then this cool piece of VBA code is top left cell, and then we need something else as well, dot. So if we say top left cell dot row, for example, this should give us the row that the knight's on. So if I go ahead and I'm going to run the routine this time, hit the F5 key, and we can see 11 has flashed up. That's because the knight is on the 11th row. Let's take it down to the 13th row, click into the routine again, hit the F5 key, and now we've got 13. And we can use column here as well. How about this? Top left cell dot column. Hit play and we can see column flashing up. I believe you can even use address here. Let's see if this works. So go ahead and hit play and you can see we can get the address too. How cool is that? The address is less important to us today. The column and the row, we're really interested in those two values. So interesting. In fact, we're going to declare some variables to store those values. That's going to allow us to use those values in a very portable way elsewhere uh, in the routine. So we're going to declare two variables here. I'm going to say dim k row, so night row. This is going to be an integer variable. I'm going to say row night is on. And then I'm going to say k column, k col as integer two. Okay, so we're going to take this value, save it to a variable. That means it's easier to use later in the routine. So I'm going to say kcol equals active sheet dot shapes night dot top left cell dot column. Then I'm going to copy this down, control C and control V. And I'm going to say k row now. In fact, I'm going to reverse these. I'm going to be very pedantic just because usually in Excel, we work with rows first and then columns, for example, when we're using offsets. So I'm going to say k row equals top left cell dot row, k col equals top left cell dot column. So as always, building up step by step. If you have an infinity project, this is what you're going to be doing, building up the code step by step. So hitting the F8 key one more time. Are we getting these values into the variables? k row equals 13, k col equals seven. So going through this, step by step. So we've managed to store uh, the column and store the row. Now we want to loop through the cells on the board because this is the idea. This is our concept. Go back to the con concept sheet to remind yourself if you want. We're going to loop through the rows and then we want to highlight the cells that are two, two, two cells up or down, two cells left or right, and then one cell up or down or left or right. And as I said, describe much more clearly on the concept sheet. So go and check that out. How are we going to do that? We're going to have to check all of the cells, aren't we? So that means what? That means looping through the cells. Best way to do that, a range variable is going to allow us to do that. So I'm going to say dim Chris cell as range. I only use Chris cell because if you use your name, it means it's going to be a distinctive name for the variable because certain uh, possible variable names such as cell, Excel is going to reserve for its own use. So Chris cell just guarantees Excel isn't going to be using that word. You can use your own name. It doesn't have to be Chris cell, of, Chris cell, of course. So I'm going to say for each Chris cell, so a for each loop, for each Chris cell in range, and then board. Remember, we've got that board named range. 
what do we do when we open a loop? We need to remember to close the loop. Then we're going to say next Chris cell here. Oh, actually right here. I was just saying it. So next Chris cell. So can we see this is working? And let's do a little test. Let's see if this is working. What attributes of the cell do we want to know? Well, we need to know the row and the column. So I'm going to say message box Chris cell dot row. Can we just get the row flashing up? And that should work for the column too. Once again, hitting the F8 key, F8 key, and then we can see eight flashing up. That's because Excel started in the top left corner. F8 again, I believe it's going to be eight again. It is. So if we change this to column, we're going to see Excel working across the columns as it goes through the loop. So now five, column five, column six, so column F and column seven there. So it seems to be working pretty well. Mm. Okay, so getting a bit more tricky now. We need to compare the column of this cell to the night column and compare the row of this cell to the night row. I'm going to go back to the concept sheet. I'm benefiting from having a plan. So the night travels two squares up or across, then one square up or across. So it's two squares and then one square. If we can find the differences between the column and row numbers of the cells and the night, we can find legal moves. Okay, so how would we find those differences? Hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm going to use a variable here. Not absolutely necessary. I'm going to say row diff here as integer, and this is going to be the difference between difference between night row, KN row, and cell row. And then the same thing for control C, control V here, column diff, the same thing for the columns. A difference between KN col and cell col here. Okay, so we're doing a calculation and the result of that, that calculation, we're going to put in a variable, makes it more portable, just makes the code a bit easier to understand, not absolutely necessary. So I can now say col diff equals, equals Chris cell dot column minus, is the difference between minus, and then now our variable is going to come into play, minus k col. And we just want the absolute value. So I'm going to put the abs function is this in Excel VBA around this. And abs just means if the result is negative, it's going to return a positive result because it's actually immaterial to us, whether it's uh, negative or positive. So this should give us a col diff. And then we want to do the same thing. So row diff equals... I'm going to uh, recycle this code, abs, control C, control V here, Chris, so Chris dot row of course, minus night row. Mm. Okay, interesting. Just to make things clear, I'm going to put a message box in to flash up the address of the cell that we're currently looping through. So message box, Chris cell dot address, that should flash up the address. So with all this information, we should be able to work out what's going on here. So hitting the F8 key, cell dot address is C8. So we're now working with cell C8. So it says call difference, it's return a value of four. Hmm. Yeah, it seems to be right, doesn't it? Because we're in column three here and the night is in column seven. Four minus three is seven. Seven. <laughs> Seven minus three is four, I think is what I mean there. Okay, anyway, you get the idea. Row difference equals five. Okay, so we're on row eight now. And then the night is on row 13. 13 minus eight equals five. Okay, seems to be working. Good, and you should go ahead and test a few more just to really consolidate this idea. Right, can we finish this off, the, off then? So if, if we plus together... The, the call difference and the row difference. And once again, go back to the concept to kind of understand this again, doing it for myself as much as, um, as much as you. If those two differences equal three, that means we're in one of these squares. We're in one of the possible night squares, apart from this one and this one. We're going to talk about those in a second as a bit of a special case. So I can now say if call diff plus row diff but if equals three, then what do we want to do in the cell? Let's just put a value in the cell. 
but let's just put a letter in the cell more, more specifically. So we, we just want a Y to appear in the cell. Then Chris cell is the name of the variable we're using to loop through the cell. So we just say Chris cell equals Y there. Mm. Okay, shall we just play this? Let's just play this and let's see what happens. Going to hit play and I can see, ah, well, this is, this is like a rookie error really because I've left the message box in. So it's going to go through 64 message boxes. I'm going to hold down the escape key. Code execution has been interrupted. So I just held down the escape key on my system there. Now I'm going to hit the F5 key and I can see, yes, we're almost there, aren't we? We're almost there. Let's move the night somewhere else. And then let's hit the F5 key. We're pretty close, aren't we? We're pretty close. So what specific cases do we want to eliminate? Well, let's run this one more time with the F5 key. Where, um, yeah, this is it, isn't it? So where at the top, at the bottom, and the far right, and the far left. So stop the video. How would you go about eliminating those? Mm. Okay, different ways to do it. But if we're at one of these points, then the column difference is going to be three, or the row difference is going to be three. Mm. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to just keep this simple. I'm going to put this in another if, if statement. I'm, I'm going to say if cold if does not equal three and row diff does not equal three, then we're going to go into this one line if statement. I'm just going to wrap around this if statement, probably not necessarily. You could probably do this with one if statement. It's just clearer to me uh, what's going on here. Okay. So what's going to happen now? So hopefully we're, we've avoided those points because at each of these points, either the column difference is three or the row difference is three. So I'm going to hit the F5 key here and I can see we seem to have got the result here. I'm going to move the knight, hit the F5 key. We seem to have got our result. So we seem to have got the knight moving. So I hope you like the technical explanation, the VBA there, but the truth is, this video is not just about the VBA techniques. This video is about your Infinity project. What's your crazy idea in VBA? That crazy project, could I do that? You've got to try to do it. I've got a chess computer. I've got a football game. I've got a golf game. I've got a few different Infinity projects. Let me know in the comments below, what is your Infinity project? You need to choose something that's really going to stretch you. It's going to create a safe space. I love this idea of a safe space. You know it's impossible. It is infinite, but that's the key. That's the secret. That takes the pressure off, and it gives you license to try new things. Play is so powerful, guys. Excel VBA, getting better at Excel VBA is all about play. The next video to watch, guys, is in the pinned comment below. I'm going to put the chess series in there. So you can go and watch the chess series. It's 20 videos, me trying to build a chess computer. You're going to learn so much Excel VBA there. A few laughs. You get to see me suffer while I'm doing the Excel VBA. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video in the pinned comment.